Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. All right, so this might be the last one of these videos for a little minute, I'm not sure. So I'm doing a book haul, Amazon, and I've mentioned that I'm getting ready to go back to school. I'm going to grad school and it's an accelerated program. Uh, it might be a little hectic. I'm not sure how things are going to work out yet. So this might be the last book haul for a little minute. I'm not sure. We're going to see, but your girl is back again with another book haul. So we're just going to jump right into it because I'm excited. Um, so I have this one. This book came from a different warehouse than the other ones. That's why it's not together. Cute. So here I have the gifts that bind us by Caroline O'Donoghue. So this is actually the sequel to all our hidden, all our hidden gifts that I previously showed. And I already know this isn't gonna match with the first one. So this is the original um, cover design for her series. And she recently came out with a new cover design, which if you watched my previous book haul, you'll see it. I'll put it so y'all can go see what the new cover design looks like, which I do like more. Um, and the second book came out long ago, original, but the new cover design for the second book came out and it was hardcover. And I'm not sure when the paperback is coming out. And I like my books when they're series, so either be all paperback or all hardcover. Sometimes that doesn't always happen. But that's a preference. And the third book to the series hasn't come out yet. And I'm not sure if it's going to come out with the old cover and the new cover or just the new cover. But as of right now, I do have paperbacks and um, first and the second. They are not the same cover design. They are not the same height as well. Um, that's going to very much irk me because it's not going to be symmetrical, but it's fine. We're going to get into it now. I did all that talking, uh, but it's not even much to discuss. So some gifts are given freely. Others expect something in return. Maeve and her friends have spent the summer practicing their gifts. Maeve can read minds, Rope picks locks, Fiona can heal, and Lily channels electricity. What's more, Ro and Maeve are officially an item. But with strange things happening at school and old enemies appearing in new places, it's clear their powers are attracting the wrong attention, and it's not long before Maeve's gift starts to wane, drained by someone or something, hiding even from her second right. Now, oh, second sight, sorry. It's not giving you much. So in the first one, Maeve is a main character. She discovers the tar these tarot cards and she starts doing readings and becomes pretty popular one of her old best friends who is mentioned lily she gives her a reading and she gets it's like i forgot the card name but it's an old lady in a white dress like something like that it's one of those cards that just appears in the deck and then i think two or three days later lily goes missing and may feels guilt and she thinks it's because of this card so she kind of goes on this whole little hunt to try to bring lily back and ro is lily's older brother who they start something and then mave also becomes friends with hold on fiona which mave really didn't have friends so her and fiona kind of bonded after the tarot card thing and then there was a whole lot going on. I'm not going to say what came to be. You'll just have to read the first one. But then they kind of form this group. The tensions are kind of high in the group, but it is what it is. And it seems like they did something in the first book to cause them to have these now gifts, apparently. And that's kind of caught up to where we are. And I'm excited because I actually just finished the book not too long ago. Um, so this one has 
404 pages, which is way more than the first one. And also to show y'all, this is the original cover design for the first one and then, you know, the second one. And it says the trilogy is coming soon, which comes in 2023. So, you know, maybe later on in life, I'll get all the books in the same version. But for now, they're different versions and it's okay because it is what it is and I want to continue the series. Um, also, oh, you know why? You know why? Why does this say UK? It says UK. It's saying the price is 7.99 euros. Um, I will have the price somewhere on the screen. So this makes so much more sense. But I'm not gonna lie, when I went on Amazon, they had this um copy for the paperback and then the hardcover they had the new version so i'm i'm not sure if if it was only supposed to be in the uk or whatnot but it is what it is um <laughs> the gifts that bind us i have the book now so can't complain now we're gonna open up the box for the rest of my book so i i got um six books this time around and I want to say just about all of these are part of a series. They're like continuations of series. I think I only have one that is a standalone. Okay. Let's get into it. Oh, this book is so small. Okay. She's so pretty. So The Merciless Ones by Namina Forna. So this is the sequel. The first one has been on my channel before. The first one is The Gilded Ones. This is actually a trilogy. The third one, I'm not sure when it comes out, but there is the third one on the way. But again, let's just appreciate this cover. Um, And I'll read the back. It's on the inside, but the back has something. It says, will they see us as warriors or monsters? It's been six months since Dika freed the goddesses and discovered who she really is. Wars are being waged across the kingdom. Otarans think Jitu are traitors to the nation and Dika is called a monster. But the real battle has only just begun and Dika must lead the charge. Dika is tasked with freeing the rest of the goddesses. Only as she begins to free them, she begins to see a strange symbol in place of worship on an armor. There's something unnatural about the symbol. Just looking at it makes Zika lose her senses. Even worse, it seems to repel her powers. She can't command or communicate with the new Death Shriekers. In fact, she can't even understand them when they speak. Dika knows that freeing the goddesses is just the beginning. She can tell that whatever dark force is out there is powerful and something sinister connected to the symbol threatens the kingdom, something merciless, that her army will need to stop before humanity crumbles. But Dika's powers are only getting stronger and her strongest weapon could be herself. Okay, so... I've literally been waiting for this book for a while to catch y'all up. So in this world, there's like a ritual, I believe when you turn 16, you have to like go to the priest or something and you have to bleed or whatever. And if your blood comes out normal, then it's all good. It's all fine. But I believe, sorry if I'm wrong, it's been a little minute. Dika's blood comes out gold and that's when people know something's wrong these death streakers come to get her but dika kind of repels them away she in the end like saves her community or whatever but then they hold homegirl hostage then it's a whole thing so there's technically i don't i guess i don't know the correct i'll just say a group of girls where their blood is gold and that means they're something else and they're of power let's say and they're supposed to fight these death shriekers but come to find out death shriekers are fallen girls with gold blood it's it's a whole thing it it's hard to 
explain but needless to say Dika is basically the leader and she is able to communicate with death streakers it's like kind of her superpower at this point and they had this big old battle at the end of the first one where she kind of discovers her powers and people start to see the truth of how you know death streakers came to be and whatnot so here we have it we're moving on to the second book of the series and it's a trilogy so there's more after this and she's pretty thick if i do say so myself so i'm i'm excited i'm so excited this one has 456 pages we love to see it and this is the first one in the series the gilded ones so i'm excited you know it's gonna be great i already know it um next oh oh my god this book is so thick like i have never read a book this thick jesus christ <laughs> trying to process the, oh my god so here we have it <laughs> Empress Crowned in Red by CNN Smart. This is the sequel to Witches Steeped in Gold, and it's also the conclusion to the series. So this is the back, Witches Steeped in Gold. It's been on my channel. I did not know how thick this book was going to be. This is crazy. Hold on. We're in the 700. Shut up. This book has 752 pages, 78 chapters. I feel like... <laughs> okay, so this is the thickest book I own. This is crazy. I'm mentally not prepared to read this. Like, I've been waiting for this book to come out, right? To continue the series. But now seeing all these pages, I'm mentally, like, not prepared. I'm excited, but it's... It's going to take a toll. Um, the back says a lost empress, a ruthless doyen, an unearthly new enemy who will wear the bloody crown. Okay. Jesus Christ. The doyen is dead and the throne is empty. Araya, her revenge has taken the magic unfettered, turns her sights on a bigger goal, freeing Ayaka for the Obeya. But the first, she must guide the guise of the rogue warrior and become the lost empress her people need. Jasmine's mother has been overthrown, but her people aren't ready to call her Doyen. She's no stranger to a fight, though she's prepared to go to some extreme lengths and court ruthless danger to secure her title. But a new threat is awakening, an enemy with a vicious intent and an army of nightmares from beyond the veil. An enemy who has waited a decade to strike and who will claim both Arya's birthright and Jasmine's bloody crown. Trust is sacred and betrayal a breath away. And Araya and Jasmine must once again turn to each other. After all, better the witch you know, the nightmares you don't. The war has just begun. I have to take a moment. Okay. Okay. In the first one, Jasmine's family has taken over the throne, so they're not the rightful rulers araya's family has been slaughtered but she somehow slipped through and she was being held captive she is the rightful ruler now there's this whole thing where jasmine's mom gets killed and she gets put in this position to be the doyen which is the ruler but there are people who don't really accept her they're not really forgiving something is suspicious and then it you know comes to light that araya is alive and she is actually you know the last of the rightful bloodline to be the ruler and they get thrown into a situation where the two of them do have to work together it's basically a means to an end relationship. They don't really like each other. They don't care for each other, but they need each other in the sense. Um, because there is an evil and with the two of their powers combined, you know, they can solve things. There's also some people trying to play both sides and that kind of stirs things between the girls. And it's already not, they're already not good together. Like it's, already tragic because Jasmine keeps I think in a way she's trying to 
calm herself by asking Araya, like, you don't want this, right? Like, I'm going to be the doyen when all is done. And in Araya's head, it's like, sure, she's she's not fighting to be the ruler. She's fighting for her people to get the rights that they deserve. She doesn't necessarily need to be the one to wear the crown. But I think as time goes on and they start to really get into things, Araya starts looking at the possibility to becoming the doyen and that doesn't sit well with Jasmine. So that's where we are. Y'all, this is, this is wild. Cause this is really, this is thick. But I'm excited nonetheless. I'm excited nonetheless. Um, So the original price on this book is $17.99. Um, I also forgot the original price on here is $17.99 as well. God, look how thick this is. But, um, we're gonna move on. I have three more books. All right, next we have A Chorus Rises by Bethany C. Morrow. This is the sequel to A Song Below Water. This is what it looks like. It's been on my channel before. But I just started this series and oh, I also forgot to say just about all of these books just came out um, this month. Well, in June, I should say, because it's just July now. So I think only two of them had already been out, but most of these just got out. So, you know, I had been waiting for them. So I had to get them so I can continue the series. But um I'll read the back and we can get into the discussion. Teen influencer Namina Bradshaw has it all. She's famous, stylish, gorgeous, and she's an Iloko. A charismatic person gifted with a melody that people adore. Everyone loves her until she's cast as a villain who exposes Siren to the whole world. But she's not letting strangers define her or her power to shape the world. Okay, so to catch you up, because technically in this book, we're focusing more on Namina instead of, I said Namina, Naima, instead of the other two characters in the first book, A Song Below Water, it focused on Tavia and Effie, who they weren't blood sisters, but they were sisters. Um, and Tavia was a siren and Effie at the end, we discover she's like a gorgon i think that's the correct term and also this world is like mystical magical we have sirens we have gorgons we have locos it has mm, but it's i guess based in normal world as well mm. so tavia and effie they're good friends they protect each other practically family family now naima bullies like the both of them in a way but at the same time they don't let her walk all over her like she feels like she has the power and she doesn't until one night Effie is in the middle of like transforming or whatever because she's finally figured out who she is and Naima is live streaming this whole thing. She exposes Tavia as a siren and Naima for who she, I mean, and Effie for who she is. And Tavia basically tells Effie, like, turn her to stone because Effie's a Gorgon. She can do that type of stuff. So she gets turned into sto stone. And there's a deeper meaning behind that as well because there's a whole other thing in the first book. Needless to say, Tavia breaks the curse and is the reason Naima is breathing again. But she still hates the both of them because she claims they ruined her life. At, but she's the one who exposed them. She's the one who is rude and mean and malicious for no reason. So I'm assuming we're kind of just hearing Naima's story, her side of things and what her life has become. So I am interested to get into that because Naima is also like mystical she's in a loco and they have like this alluring song and a thing they have their own type of power so it'll be interesting to see what she's up to if she's made any changes kind of what's going on for her so there we have it the sequel and this is a quick read 
the first one was quick this one has 260 pages the original price for this one is nine dollars and 99 cents so there we have it moving on oh my god this one is smaller than i wanted it to be we're just full of surprises here um this wicked fate by kaylin byron so this is the sequel and the conclusion to this poison heart uh it's been on my channel before i love that book and if you've seen this poison heart you know it is thicker than this book so it is surprising to see it thin and knowing that it's the conclusion to the series but also I'm excited because this is one of the characters in the book so it's really nice to like see what she looks like it's it's cute it's cute I'm here for it um would you tempt even the most dangerous fate to save the to save the ones you love Bria sees has one chance to rescue her mother, but she'll need to do the impossible. Find the last fragment of the deadly Arbister's heart. To locate the missing piece, she must turn to the blood relatives she's never known, learn about their secret powers, and take her place in their ancient lineage. But Briseis is not the only one who wants the heart, and her enemies will stop at nothing to fulfill their own ruthless plans. The fates tell a story of a truly dangerous journey, and one that could end in heartache and more death. Strengthened by the sisterhood of ancient magic, can Briseis harm her power to save the people she loves most? Best-selling author Kaylin Byron continues the story of Briseis and her family in this unique magic sequel to this Poison Heart. All right, catching us up a bit. So Briseis was adopted by her two moms, um, but they get this like mysterious letter or whatever saying homegirl has inherited this house from I think it was like the dead aunt and it took some back and forth this and that but it finally comes that they go over there and come to find out when they get to this like town or whatever her family was very popular they had this um why can't I think I think it was like a little apothecary um going on so very popular and when the town found out that Briseis was coming back, they thought the apothecary was opening again because her family had this mystical magic. They were into things like Briseis has a power of, I guess, like controlling plants, speaking to them, that type of thing. That's like in her family lineage. And as she stays in this house, she starts to learn more about her powers, more about her family, her blood family but she meets this girl but some people are telling her to stay away from her she also meets this boy so at this point she's kind of not sure what she wants to do and in the end somebody comes back like from the dead there's this person out to get her her mother gets killed one of her mothers gets killed and she's like, you know, what can I do to save her? Da, 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 da. And this is when we get to the Arbiter's heart, which it's hidden all over the place. She's like relatives with Medea, I believe, which I'm pretty sure Medea is related to Medusa. I think that becomes, that's like something. But I'm excited because i have been waiting for this book for so long especially when i was like getting closer to finishing this point in heart and realizing that we weren't gonna end it like this there was more to go so i'm very excited to read this but also a little bit sad because it is kind of small but i'm excited nonetheless you guys so this has 310 pages yeah not much and then down here this is the first one in the series and this is another book by her cinderella said i have read both of those i love her she's fantastic and the price the original price on this is 18.99 but i'm very excited we're moving on to the last book this has been on my list for the longest time since it's been out ace of spades bro but look at this cover but also you see how the card is look at the back we love to see it now i'm only going to say the first name of this author farida i believe that's correct 
Sorry if that is not. I'm not even going to attempt the last name. It's just not happening. I don't want to. But y'all, I love this. I've been waiting and it was actually on sale just while all these books were on sale. I think they were like all kind of on sale because Prime Day is coming up. So um, on the back, it says a figure approaches the door and the distorted smile and pale skin of the mask comes into view. All you need to know is I'm here to divide and conquer like all great tyrants do, aces. When two Nevius private academy students, Devon Richards and I hope I say this right, Chimika Adebayo, are selected to be part of the elite school senior perfects. It looks like their year is off to an amazing start. After all, not only does it look great on a college application, but it officially puts them in the running for valedictorian too. Shortly after the announcement is made though, someone goes by aces begins sending anonymous text messages to reveal secrets of the two of them that turn their lives upside down and threaten every aspect of their carefully planned futures. As Aces shows no sign of stopping, what seemed like a sick prank quickly turns into a dangerous game. With all the cards stacked against them, can Devon and Chimika stop Aces before everything, before things become incredibly deadly? With a heart pounding suspense and relevant social commentary comes a highly octane thriller from the debut author, Farida. I'm excited. It's low key giving, um, a vibes from Pretty Little Liars, if you watch that series. There's a group of them and then they randomly started receiving messages from this person A, some of their secrets got revealed. So that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting. And as I say, people never get put together for just like random reasons. There is always a connection somewhere. So I'm thinking these two are connected in some type of way. Maybe they know, maybe they don't know. And now, obviously, with, you know, their secrets being revealed and stuff, they're probably going to be forced to start working together to figure out who this Aces person is, come to the end, like, figure out what's going on, what's the real reason. There may or may not be romance, like, I'm not sure. It wasn't giving anything in the book, so I don't know where that's headed, but I'm excited because I've been, like, just waiting for the right moment to get this book. And it's finally here and i've heard tons tons of great things about this book so i'm excited and it's just it's giving what it should be giving also look look how cute this is i love it and it has 422 pages so not too much but just enough so i'm here for it and the original price on this book says $18.99. And that is the last book in my series. I mean, last book in this haul. Also, I'm just noticing on the cover, it says, An Unknown Enemy, How Do You Stop? Like right here and right here. So that's cool, but I'm loving it. It's, it's giving. I'm excited. I'm excited to read all of these though. And to say I'm going out with a bang, because again, I'm still not sure if this is the last book haul for a while or not, but that's kind of what I'm giving you guys. I'm not sure if this will be the last one. So I'll just show all the books again and end the video out because that's it. Um, so Ace of Spades by Farida. This Wicked Fate by Kaylin Byron. Emperor's Crown in Red by Shannon Smart. Of course, Rises by Bethany C. Morrow. The Merciless Ones by Namina Forna. And The Gifts That Bind Us by Caroline O'Donoghue. And those are all my books. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like to see more, please hit the subscribe button down below. Peace and blessings, my loves.